Hello, hello. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if this is your first time. My name is Jennifer, and this is Jen the Bookworm. And today I'm bringing you a continuation of a series I started a while ago uh, called Books to Screen. And today we are taking a look at the Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief book and its adaptation, the movie adaptation that was done. Uh, this movie's been out a long time ago, uh, but and the books are not that new either, but I recently read through the first book, um, kind of a read along with my daughter. And as a reward for having read the book, um, uh, we got to watch the movie and I, this is not the first time that I'd seen the movie, but I hadn't seen it since it came out in the theaters. I didn't remember particularly enjoying it then. Um, so, um, but then having read the book and then watched the movie directly after it, I noticed quite a lot of differences and, and things that, um, that I thought would make a good video to discuss. So in a video like this, um, I do like to just remind you that this is my opinion and my opinion is it's subjective and you must, if you love the book or if you love the movie, or if I say something different than how you feel, that's okay. Um, you're entitled to your opinions, same as me. Uh, and this video is about mine. Uh, so I just wanted to remind you about that. Uh, also that there will be spoilers in this review. It's impossible for me to talk about whether or not the adaptation did well without mentioning some things that it missed or, or that it changed. And so therefore there's going to be spoilers to that, uh, book. And I'll end up asking five questions in here. Um, what did the, uh, book do better? What did the movie do better? What changes were, uh, understandable? What changes were unforgivable? Uh, did the actors embody the characters they were asked to play and how well was the book adapted overall in my opinion? So those are the questions that I'm going to be going through. Um, let's get into it. Firstly, let's start with a small synopsis of the story. Uh, Percy Jackson is a kid uh, lives in New York and he goes to boarding schools and he is a kid with ADHD and dyslexia and he finds it very difficult to read. Uh, he often finds the words are jumbled on a page and he has to really concentrate really hard to be able to read the, the words. He um, seems to get into trouble a lot um, and he he just is struggling. Uh, his, his dad's not in the picture. Um, his mom's married a man who he calls Smelly Gabe. He really doesn't like him. The man's kind of a, a obnoxious pig and treats his mom badly. And so when he's at home, he has to see that. When he's away from home, he wishes he was at home. When he was at home, he can't stand his stepdad. Um, so he's not got the most cheery of lives. He, in this book, he finds out that he is the son of, um, a God and he, um, runs into some trouble. Uh, Zeus believes that Poseidon used his son, Percy, to steal his lightning bolt. And there's going to be war between the gods if Percy doesn't return the lightning bolt. Of course, Percy doesn't know anything about this. He didn't even know he is, his dad was Poseidon. So the, the book takes, uh, takes you through, he goes to a camp called the half blood camp and it's where a bunch of demigods, um, sons and daughters of, of the great gods, uh, come to because they're all, uh, in danger sometimes out in the real world. So they come to this place, they learn, they train, um, they do quests. And Percy Jackson is no different. He comes to this camp. He is given a quest to go find the lightning bolt and return it by a certain time to prevent war. So what does the book do better? Most of the time I want to answer that with everything. Um, that's not always true, but it's, it's almost become a cliche that the books are better than, than movies or, or shows. But there are, were a few things that or there was at least one thing I thought the movie did well, but let's talk about what the book did better. I think the book did a better job of portraying 
um, a kid with ADHD and, and dyslexia. They mention it in the movie, but they don't really make it a, a big point of it. And it's kind of cool that Rick Riordan turned uh, dyslexia and ADHD into indicators of, of being a demigod, being something special. Um, I think a lot of kids who go to school with these kinds of afflictions end up feeling like they are less than or broken or or that there's something wrong with them in general. And instead, this book says, no, you're actually kind of a superhero. And so I, I kind of appreciated that. And the way they portray it in the book is his dyslexia. It isn't so much as dyslexia. It's that his brain automatically can uh, reads everything in ancient Greek. And in order for him to read it in uh, English, he has to concentrate extra hard for the, the words to come out that way. Uh, but he can read Greek, like super easy. So that was kind of interesting in my opinion. Um, I think the relationships between the characters are far better in the book. In the book, these, these kids are like 12 years old or something like that. I think they were 12 year olds, but in the movies, they look, they're far more like 17. So in the books, you have kids who Annabeth and Percy kind of go head to head a little bit. Annabeth is the daughter of Athena, Percy, the son of Poseidon, and apparently Poseidon and Athena in this uh, rendition of the gods, they, they clash a lot. So <clears throat> the kids clash a little bit and they're 12. So they're still at the point where girls have cooties, boys have cooties, whatever. They're not, there's no romantic tension or anything like that. They're not sure they like each other. They're not sure they hate each other. They're not sure. And it comes across a little bit kind of like, um, <clears throat> Harry Potter and, um, well, more like Ron and Hermione in the beginning. They're not sure about each other, but then they become friends. And it's a little bit like that in the books. But in the movies, the kids are more like 17. And the will they, won't they, do they, don't they comes across more as sexual tension. And I wasn't expecting sexual tension in my middle grade book adaptation. The kids were aged up. And I maybe at the time... It was, there was questions about whether or not it would work having younger kids. But I think Harry Potter, if anything else, has shown us that a younger cast like that can be very charming and endearing. And it doesn't have to be older kids who are making eyes at one another or just acting like they, they think they have a crush on one another. Uh, it sort of muddied things it sort of muddied their relationship. It, their relationship is very kind of superficial um, and less in depth, less of a friendship because they didn't, because they, uh, act, they made the kids older, because they made the tension more sexual, uh, more flirty, it really kind of destroyed any kind of foundation for friendship that was built in the book. In the book, the story was far more complicated and multi-layered uh, than it was in the movie. And I get it for movies, you sort of have to trim things down. And sometimes that means letting side stories go um, or or just barely mentioning them and, and having them not be very important to the story because you have timing and pacing and such. And a, and a book doesn't have to worry about that as as much. Um, but I really enjoyed the, the multi-layered, more complex, story that the book gave us as opposed to the watered down version that the movie gave us. So what did the movie do better? Well, I really enjoyed the visuals in the movie of the, um, the gods themselves. They looked human proportioned, but they were actually giants, but they weren't giant proportions. So, um, which is to mean they weren't like big and meaty and whatever, but they were, um, just normal, human proportion size just on a bigger scale. And I thought that was kind of cool. The side by side with, with them. And, and when Percy came to, um, to give back the, the 
uh, artifact at the end, um, just seeing them kind of on the same scale um, or on the same area and seeing the scale difference was kind of cool. Uh, so I did kind of enjoy that. Um, I enjoyed um, seeing some of the fantasy elements. It's always nice to to be able to do that. Um, but I wouldn't say that it was strictly necessary. I mean, I can see those things in my head. It was kind of cool to see it on screen, but that's really the only thing I think the movie added to this at all. So what changes do I believe were understandable? Um, I think I understand making the story less complex. You just timing, pacing, I get it. You have to make things a little less complex. Um, but I think that they could have done that better. I think that they could have done it without trimming so much of the good stuff out. Um, I think that, you know, in some ways like the, the monster at the mattress store, they don't have that in the movie. They do have that in the book. I understand that that makes sense. The, uh, it's, it's a monster that it's kind of fun and, and, uh, and stuff to read about, but I understand how that might bring down the, the pacing of the actual story when they're trying to go from New York to California and they only have some, a few days to do it and stuff is you want to, you know, be careful of your pacing. So I get le letting that go, but the, the, there were other things that they let go that I think that they shouldn't have. One of the things that uh, they cut out that I kind of understand is in the book, the kids didn't actually have an easy time of getting from New York to California. That's quite a trip and they didn't have any money and they didn't have any food and it was difficult in the book. There was times when they talked about their hunger and stuff like that and, and it was a difficult journey and they only actually got to where they were going by getting help from a few people along the way and I think maybe adding those few people in, adding that struggle into the movie would have really slowed it down. So I understand making that choice. I understand making it a little easier or kind of montaging a little bit um, and just kind of suddenly they're in California. So I understand making that decision. So what changes do I think were unforgivable? Well, there's a lot. Um, they took out too much of the complexity of the story. And now I said I understood having to do some, but they took out too much. They took out Clarice, who was a bully in, in the Half-Blood camp, uh, and therefore they couldn't add Ares, who was a huge proponent, proponent to the, 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 um, the scheme to capture the... Um, the lightning bolt and to create a war between the gods and Ares was behind so much of that and he was not even mentioned. I don't think there was at all a mention of the god Ares in the movie at all and that's a travesty. That to me feels like you're completely changing something from the from the book to the movie and that's a travesty. I don't think that that's that's good. And I did see in the previews for the next movie that they add Clarice back in. It really feels like the second movie was uh, part two of the first book in some ways because they add some of those things in that should have been in there to begin with. Uh, Clarice was kind of an important character uh, because she gave a uh, reason for Ares to be in the, in the story. <clears throat> and so they shouldn't have changed that, in my opinion. Also, uh, the lightning bolt wasn't the only artifact that was stolen. Um, Hades had an artifact stolen as well. And the fact that both Zeus and Hades had an artifact stolen made Percy or Poseidon look even more um, guilty of being responsible for this. And there was going to be a large scale war of the gods. There was, there was mention of Kronos. There was... I mean, they, in the movie, they mentioned Kronos, like, for a moment in a history lesson. It was, he was not a, a character in the book, in the, the movie, but he was a force, anyway, in the book. Um, so I really feel like there were 
just too many things taken out, too many things that were important to the story taken out. Also, as I said before, the kids being aged up, the uh, sexual tension instead of, um, you know, friendship tension or whatever being added in there. I, I don't, I don't think that was a good move. I don't think that was uh, a forgivable change. Lastly, the action scenes were kind of, well, not kind of, they were crude. They were not good. The, especially the, the end scene that they kind of, you know, pull back on and you see everyone's practicing on swords and stuff like that. I've never seen anything that looks like more of a choreographed dance than a action scene ever. It, they all te telegraphed everything. There was no way you could be drawn in by that because it drew you out of the story. You knew exactly what he was going to do when she did this and so on. And all of them, they were like wooden, w very wooden movements, like they were playing with toy sticks um, and not actually warriors who were training to fight with swords and stuff. In the book, um, Annabeth wasn't any like fantastic, most fantastic fighter ever, but in the movie, she was sort of billed as being one of the best. When you first see her, she is surrounded by like three or four people and they're all sort of fighting together and, and she's holding them all off and she's great and she's whatever. That's kind of an extra added skill that they gave to her for the movie. Um, but she, but the acting, the chore, the choreography, the, the sword play was not good. It was not good. Um, it looked like children playing with sticks. So I, I think they could have done a lot better with that. Did the actors embody the characters they were being asked to play? For the most part, yes, I do believe that, that the actors all did a good job. Um, the boy that played Percy was a very believable Percy, um, other than they, you know, aged him up and stuff. Um, yeah, I think the actors did a great job. I've got no complaints, uh, with that. My problem was more, uh, how they wrote the story, how they produced the story more than the acting. I, I didn't have a problem with that so much. How well was this book adapted into a movie? Um, well, I don't think they did a good job. I don't think it was a good adaptation. I think there was so much more that they could have done to bring this story alive. They, I don't think it was good. And it's no secret that Rick Riordan didn't think it was a great adaptation either. Um, and they have announced that there's going to be a new adaptation on Disney Plus. Um, and it looks like the kids are going to be the right age and it's going to be a series rather than a movie. So maybe they'll have time to work in that, the complexities of that story. Um, I'm looking forward to checking that out and seeing if that, um, holds up better. And if it does, maybe I'll make a video on that kind of going over what I like or don't like about that adaptation. Uh, but overall, I would give the book four stars. I thought it was a really good book. And um, and my daughter read it, and she really liked it as well. And she's more the intended target audience than I am. But, uh, but we both did enjoy the book. Um, I'll give the movie two stars. My daughter and my roommate liked it. Um, and that's probably why it's getting two stars instead of one. Um my roommate had never read the book before and he found it to be an enjoyable movie. And so maybe the movie would be more enjoyable had I not read the book and not had all these, you know, things to complain about. So I gave it a two, but the adaptation I gave a one star is not a good adaptation. I'm really hoping that the next time they try with Percy Jackson, it works out better because it was a fantastic story and I, I would love to see it, done justice. So that's what I have for you today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this discussion and I hope that um, you come back to to many more that I have planned in the future. Uh, please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Did you watch this movie? Did you read this book? Do you agree with my assessment or do you not? It's okay if you don't agree, but please go ahead and feel free to put your uh, comments in the comment section. If you didn't agree with me, if you did, um, I'd love to see what you have to say about it. Um, if you have 
uh, enjoyed this. I appreciate it very much if you would give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. It's free to do and it really helps out the channel. It lets me know that you want to see more content like this or more content in general. Um, so I appreciate the time that you came to spend with me and I hope that you have a great rest of your day.